Hi and welcome back to Super Rare Mixtape Volume 2. Today we're going to try out one of the demos, Scarlet Hollow, which sounded super interesting. So let's check it out. This is a horror game, and if it's not intended for all audiences... Ooh. It looks hand-drawn. They have a lot of nice accessibility options going on. Poolsville. Does not impact gameplay. Oh, just... Nice. Try to unlock paths and dialogue options. Powerful build, mystical, talk to animals, street smart. Keen eye, book smart, hot, attractive and charming, a natural flirt. If you want to either be you or be with you. I thought it said snails. I don't know, let's try mystical. It looks like there's different paths for the demo. Uh... Oh, we pick a few? How many do we pick? Oh, it looks like two. There we go. You jolt awake as the bus hits a particularly nasty bump. You feel like you're only just imagined to start drifting off. And now here you are, awake again and still exhausted. Me every night. For a moment you're hazy on the details of where exactly here is. Uh, confusing this bus with the many others that came before it. But as your mind continues to reassert its existence in the waking world, the past few days come back into focus. The long lost cousin, the bad news, the 26 hours of bus rides with countless late night stops and CD depots that felt unsafe even in the middle of the day. You wouldn't normally find yourself traveling like this, but your cousin bought the tickets. The funeral of, of her mother, your aunt, seemed like something you shouldn't ignore, even considering your own late mother's rock, rocky relationship with the side of the family. Fortunately, the end of your long journey is in sight. You're almost in Scarlet Hollow. So anyway, oh, so anyways, as I was saying, oh, wait, that's not it. <laughs> oh no, he's still here. He's been sitting next to you for the past five hours, talking at you without pause. You're not sure you even stopped when you started to doze off. At first you thought he was just being friendly, but that was several hours of one-sided conversations ago. He has a very intense stare, but he seems really happy. I was up in Maryland looking for work, but mostly messing around because I was a dumb teen. Me and my buddies were doing our usual prank stuff, you know? <laughs> Pushing joggers into the harbor, that sort of thing. Okay, damn. Wait, what? Let's remain silent. You do your best to keep a blank face. Waking up and by extension accidentally giving the strange man permission to keep talking to you was a mistake. So this girl comes up to us swinging her purse yelling about how she was going to call the cops or whatever. It was hilarious. She actually hit my friend and he said it hurt a lot so I guess he really was mad and not just playing. But she kept swinging and soon enough she lost her balance and fell into the harbor all on her own. We didn't even have to push her. We had a good laugh and fished her out. And her phone got soaked. She couldn't call the cops on us. We wound up hanging out all day. She kind of became my girlfriend after that. We've been on and off for about a year. So it's pretty serious. Though, about five months ago, she tried to break it up with me. Like, for real. And jeez, you ever just get so mad you just want to, like, kill somebody? <laughs> That's probably what I do. I'd be like, <laughs> yeah, sure. I knew you'd get me. We understand each other. Somebody trying to break your heart, that changes a person. Make them want to do things they never thought they'd want to do. I was looking to kill that woman, huh? <laughs> Anyways, she's giving birth to our son right now, so I'm trying to get up to Virginia to be there for it. But 
I don't know if I'm, like, into that stuff, so I might just wind up on a bus to New York or something instead. I've always wanted to go there. Oh my god, dude. We're just gonna stick it out, remain silent. You sit awash in horror. But doing your best to keep a neutral face as this man admit he's about... His thought about murdering the soon-to-be mother of his child. The child whose birth he is currently missing and considering ditching to go have fun in New York. Anyway, where do you say you were heading? Can we just not answer? You don't say a word. The last thing you need right now is for him to know where you're going to be staying for the next week. Hmm. If you aren't getting off at my stop, then you must be heading to Scarlet Hollow, right? Or The Holler, as they call it in these parts. That's the only other stop until the bus turn around. I ride it pretty often, so I know. Almost nobody goes up that way. Though, actually, I had a couple of buddies who went up there to work in the mine. There's a coal mine up in the holler, you see. There's always a job listing or two on the boards around there. I've never wanted to do that kind of thing myself. I like my lungs the way they are. Thanks. But my buddies got desperate enough to try it. I haven't heard from them in a while now, and I think about it. I should see if they're on Facebook. See how they're doing up there. Hope they didn't die. He looks back at his phone, for once focused on something other than you. Whew, this is me. It was lovely meeting you. Hope you don't get too bored without me around to talk to. Here, I have something for you. Peanuts? The stranger rifles through his pack before presenting you with a dripping bag of- Why are they dripping? They're boiled. They're boiled peanuts. I got them at the gas station a few houses back. I noticed you haven't eaten much, so I figured you can use them more than me. Plus, they dripped all over my bag, so I don't want to carry them anymore. Tip. Sometimes picking a dialogue option establishes new facts about who you are. Screw you and screw your peanuts. I'm actually allergic to peanuts. Oh, huh. These could probably kill you then, couldn't they? Well, like I said, I'm done carrying them. They're yours. The young man sets the peanuts down on an empty seat next to him. His juices dribble out through the bottom of the bag and into the upholstery, instantly soaking it in peanut brine. Well, that's not good. And with that, I leave you. Safe travels, friend. I'm not allergic to peanuts, but I didn't want his weird sopping bag of nuts. <laughs> no, thank you. And just like that, you're alone. The stranger's peanuts soaking into the seat across from you. You do your best to hold your breath as the bus rattles to your destination. Next up, Scarlet's Scarlet Hollow. End of the line. Almost there. Arrives Monday at 11, departs at 11.01. Wow. <laughs> That's the schedule. That's the whole schedule, Monday. 11 to 11.01. The bus finally comes to a stop. It breaks squealing as it deposits you in front of the Scarlet Hollow bus station. The sign at least reads bus station, but calling it that feels disingenuous. At best, it's a kiosk. Though, for a small town like this, you're amazed there's so much as a road, let alone a bus that drives on it every week. Ooh, or rent. The driver quickly shuts the door behind you and starts the engine, kicking up dust clouds as he pulls away, eager to leave you and this place behind. Oh. Hi. Hey, Scoob. You instantly recognize the worn young woman from the few public photos of her on Facebook page. She's your cousin, Tabitha. And she looks annoyed to be here. Hi, Tabitha. Come on, let's get back to this estate. I don't want to spend any more time down here than I have to. Okay. Your cousin turns and motions to an old BMW park near the bus kiosk. You follow her, clamoring into the dusty relic. It doesn't take much driving for the only signs of civilization are the car you're in and the road you're on. Tabitha maintains an icy silence after she focuses on the road. Dog options labeled explore can usually be taken without advancing the story. They can impact relationships and unlock additional story paths, so choose carefully. How you holding up? 
fine. You don't have to hide how you're feeling around me. We're family, even if we just met. She sighs a particularly heavy sigh. Look, I appreciate your concern, but I'm really... I'm fine, really. That's awkward. Can't believe we've never actually met before this. Yep, you have your mom to thank for that. Or had, I guess. I can sense a deep scar in our bloodline. I like that. A gaping maw intent on consuming itself to oblivion. Only hope we can mend it during our time here together here. Great. Good for you. Guess we're both members of the Dead Moms Club now, huh? Your cousin turns to stare at you, an icy hatred in her eyes. Maybe this would have worked to ease the tension if she were someone else, but she isn't. She turns back to the road, her expression cold and unforgiving. So, the funeral. It's on Sunday, right? Yep. Like I told you. Have you worked out all the details yet? Hmm. Taken care of. Don't need any help. You decide to sit in silence where your cousin as the car eases up the steep mountain road. This is scary. Like, it's... It looks like it's already about to fall into here. Probably explains why these windows are broken and these ones aren't. And here it is, the Scarlet Estate. Though it's been seen better days, its crumbling elegance is not lost on you. Someone used to cr someone used to cramped apartments in gray cities. Your mother told you about this place many times before she passed, always with an anger burning beneath her words. The faded majesty you once imagined doesn't quite compare with what's in front of you. A jarring blend of opulence and ruin. As you stare at it perched on the crumbling cliffside, you can't help but feel like it's something that should have been left to rot a long, long time ago. Ooh. Look at that little dog. And that little dog. I was hoping there'd be a third little dog. Oh, this is weird. There's like a goat above this one. Like maybe an angel above this one. Creepy face. As soon as you enter, you're hit with the blast of dusty air. Everything in the room has been here for much longer than you've been alive. Each object cemented in place with layers of dust and cobwebs. You can hear the doors creak on their hinges and the a aches and moans of ancient floorboards as the house itself sways in the wind. Welcome to our family's humble estate. Unfortunately, due to the current state of the house, only a few rooms will be safely accessible during your stay. I wouldn't go wandering around anywhere else if you value your limbs. Flora has been known to give out. If you know what's good for you, you'll stick to your room, your bathroom, and the kitchen and hallways, I guess. But only the hallways you need to use to get to those places. I'll show you around so you can get where it's safe to walk. You can leave your bags here for the time being. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I don't think I've been in a building that feels as powerful as this. You're thrying through your teeth, but Tabitha doesn't need to know that. In fact, not only does she not need to know that, you're lying, but she won't know. Ever. You're a very good liar. It is. The estate was the prize jewel of this region for a long time. It's quite a magnificent piece of architecture even now. Shall we take our tour? follow me i've noticed that uh their facial expression or her facial expressions at least seem to uh, depending on what i say and when i say it they either get like more scowly or they ease up a bit put your i think that that must have to do with the relationship right what's this oh history so you can look back on what everything that's been said even all the way back, like, all the way back to the beginning. That's really nice. Okay, let's return. Put your bags down and follow Tabitha through a long, dusty hallway. She delicately steps over the holes and tears in the floor. And you do your best to trace her steps. 
kitchen. On Wednesdays, a woman from town comes in and does the cleaning. Her name is Janie. I wouldn't recommend socializing with her. She'll talk your ear off. If you need any food, there's fixings for peanut butter and jelly. Don't touch my mac and cheese or my ice cream. Those are off limits. Oh, and you can also access the garden through here, but it's pretty wild, so I wouldn't if I were you. Some explore options prevent you from taking others. Choose carefully. I feel the weight of the world pressing in on this place. I've always dreamed of having a kitchen like this. Someone cleans this place? This place is nasty. It's nice. I'm actually allergic to peanuts. Is there somewhere in town to buy food? What if I want ice cream? Okay, let's do this one because... I think this is a really nice kitchen. Like, no joke. I've always dreamed of having a kitchen like this. It's much bigger than what I'm used to in the city. Is that a kitchen island? Kitchen island's pretty freaking dope. Like, it is. Thank you. Oh, see? She's like, getting to the point where she might have a smile. Is there somewhere in town to buy food? I want to eat something other than PB&J this week. Is there somewhere in town we can get groceries? Well, aren't you fancy? Oh, did she not like that? Yeah, there's a general store. There's also a diner. I usually order my food in bulk online, though, so I wouldn't be going with you. How folksy. But I'm your guest. Sweet, thanks. Cool. Good talk. Look at the cat! I didn't even see the cat! It's so angry! Alright, what's next? On the tour. Bathroom. Follow me. Great, it's been hours since I've gone. As the two of you leave the kitchen, you pass by a tuxedo cat sitting on the countertop. Look at it! <laughs> Is this your cat? What's its name? Frufru. Do not try to pet her. If she wants to be pet, she'll let you know. Okay, well good, that thing I didn't pet her. Leave the cat be. I mean, it looks like it wouldn't want to be pet. You decide to follow Tabitha's advice. Just a little basket. Some macaroons, maybe? Shall we move on? The bathroom awaits. You once again follow Tabitha through a long, dusty hallway. Maybe after a few nights, it'll get easier to navigate these spaces, but for the time being, you feel lucky to have not fallen through the floors. Guest bathroom. Not much to show. It's a bathroom. I'll wait outside. Do what you must if you must. Oh. Oh, it is nasty, wretched bathroom. Piles of junk sit untouched in the corners of the room and mystery stains paint the floor. Oh. Can we get someone to clean the bathroom? Kitchen's fine. This is na uh, We're not lying. This is a terrible bathroom. Lift toilet seat. Bugs skitter from the bowl as you lift the seat. I'm good. You aren't desperate enough for this. You know, on second thought, I don't think I need to go. You might as well try since we're here. Whatever. We're gonna suck it up and do it. Toilet is a toilet, sure it could be cleaner, but your business needs doing, and that is as good place as any. You do what you must and rejoin your cousin out in the hall. Do you use this? Is that wine? Or is that just a wine glass? It's red still. Is your toothbrush and wine, ma'am? Next up, guest bathroom. You and Tabitha briefly return to the foyer before climbing the stairs and reaching the guest room. Oh, guest room, not guest bathroom. The room smells old. Dust, mildew, wood rot. It has it all. A week of sleeping in this place might give you a permanent lung damage. Oh, God. This is where you'll be staying. The linens are fresh. I had Janie wash them last week. I had to endure a half-hour rant about her kid to get her to do it, so you better be grateful closet is full of old family stuff so you can't hang your clothes up but you can use the dresser 
It should be empty. I don't want to say it's inviting. It's nice. Other than, you know, all the smells of rot and stuff in the air. People have dived in here, haven't they? That sounds like a heavy spiritual fog hanging over this room. People have died here, haven't they? When? Wait, when? This house is almost 150 years old. Obviously, people died here. I don't know. What an inviting room. How do you know how much I love cherubs? Are there cherubs? I don't see any cherubs. Oh, on this. A chest is to die for. I'm surprised to see that you have such discerning taste. Every last piece of furniture in this room is genuine antique, handed out through the family for generations. Who used to sleep here? Like I said, this house is almost 150 years old. Many, many people have slept here. Now you'll sleep here, carrying on the fine tradition of bedrooms being slept in. I guess I'll start to get settled. Follow me. I'll take you back to the foyer so you can collect your belongings. This concludes our tour. I'm afraid I must return to my duties. So, you'll have to entertain yourself for the rest of the day. Don't expect to see me much. Some dialogue options will open up additional conversation paths. Some right away, others down the line. Did I do something wrong? Being such a jerk to me. Are you sure you're okay? Where are you going? Wait, where are you going? To work. Somebody has to pay the bills around here. What kind of work do you do? I run the coal mine, same as every Scarlet who came before me, except for you and your mom. Requires a lot of time and concentration, so I'd appreciate it if you didn't keep me for long. Can I come watch? What? No, the mine is dangerous. I can't babysit and do my job. I didn't know we owned a coal mine. We don't own the coal mine. I own the coal mine. Your side of the family forfeited any claim to it years ago. Hashtag girl boss. Good for you. It sounds pretty impressive and exciting. Good for you. I'd appreciate your enthusiasm, but I don't think of it as boring or exciting in the same way I don't think of cleaning a toilet or painting a wall as either of those things. It's a task. One of those tasks could use more doing. It's a healthy mindset. Seems like a good way to look at a job instead of convincing yourself you have to be doing the thing you love the most. It's okay to just have a job. Yeah, exactly. I'd rather be doing something else with my life, maybe. But I know I had to take over the company, so why think about that other stuff I could be doing? What am I supposed to do when you're gone? There's a very demanding job I should be getting back to right now that doesn't include figuring out your activities for you to occupy your time with. Not your babysitter. Why don't you, I don't know, go walk around in town or something until you get tired? There are historic buildings to look at. I'm sure they have a great time. Did I do something wrong? You asked me to come to this funeral, but since the moments I got here, you've been acting like I spat in your coffee. What's going on? Was it something I said? Okay, I'm sorry. I've been testy since you've gotten here. You've been fine. I'm just under a lot of pressure right now. Please, just stay out of my hair until later, okay? I have work to do. I'm gonna let her go. I won't keep you, but we should hang out when you get back. We'll see. There's a lot that needs to be get done this week. And then she zooms away. Cousin leaves through the front door. Basically what I said. Now it's just you. You and the sprawling, decrepit estate. Settle into your room. Go straight into forbidden wing of the estate. Let's settle first. Now that your cousin is gone, the aches and pains of your journey sink into your bones. 
You stumble back to the stairs to your room, suitcase in tow. You get to unwind before you you face the rest of the day. You stand at the entrance to your room. I like how it says, like, explore, take a nap. Let's check the closet. Ooh, let's look out the window first. You say overgrown. I say that's really pretty. Like, there's a statue. There's a staircase that leads to nothing. You walk up that staircase, you're going to go to, like, Silent Hill or something. Bet. You can only imagine how beautiful the garden must have been in its heyday. If you own this place, you'd totally go out there and shut with a shovel and get some garden gloves and whip it into shape. You'd go out, pull the weeds, chop the trees, carve uh, topiaries, and do whatever you needed to do to return it to its former glory. And once it was all done, you'd sit by the fountain, which of course would have a little goldfish in it, and drink a floral tea while enjoying the bird song. That sounds nice. Yeah, you definitely do that. Just not right now. <laughs> painting. This must have been an old relative of yours. Very old, judging by the dates on the inscription. You never heard of her, but you barely heard anything about your aunt and cousin until a week ago, so it's not really a surprise. Maybe you could ask Tabitha, T Tabitha? Tabitha about Mary Bell Scarlet the next time you see her. That is, if she's actually in the mood for conversation. Let's look at the closet. Or let's put the spare clothes in the dresser. Ah, there's a possum! <laughs> You drag your suitcase over to the dresser and open the bottom drawer. The possum lurks within. It is quiet, but angry. Look at that little dude. Gently smack- No, we're not gonna put clothes on top of possum. Well, I don't think I'd be doing that. Oh, pardon me. Gently close the drawer, leaving the marsupial in peace. The drawer belongs to the opossum, and there's nothing you can do about it. You open the top drawer next. It's empty. As good as places you'll find to put your clothes. Based on the state of the house, you wonder if you'd have better off keeping your clothes in your nice clean bag. But there's no going back now. Let's look at the closet. Oh, there's a creepy doll in there. Cool. It's not going to be in my dreams. You can see why your cousin said you should put your clothes in the dresser instead of the closet. There must be decades of family history stacked up in here. Pick up the doll. Of course you're sharing a room with a creepy doll. You pick up and examine it more closely. This foot reads, Property of Alexandra. No need to carry this around with you. You close the closet behind you. We're gonna take a nap! You immediately collapse into the bed. You're tired enough that being alone in a strange new place won't stop you from passing out. Or so you thought. You cough as a small cloud of dust rises from the mattress. These sheets might be fresh, but everything beneath them might have been around to see the dawn of civilization. You try to settle in, but the bed is lumpy in a strange places, and you feel, feel the springs pressing through the fabric. You might be tired, but you're far from tired enough to get more than a few minutes of uncomfortable napping. Well, that's enough. It doesn't seem like there's much else for you to do in here right now. Let's make a jelly sandwich! The only thing louder than your stomach right now are the creaks and moans of this ancient place. You might not have told Tap though about your peanut allergy, but a jelly sandwich will do just fine for how hungry you are. You head to the kitchen. <laughs> well, it looks like we're allergic to peanuts now. Back in the kitchen, ready to craft a beautiful jelly sandwich. It's a daunting task given the state of the place, but the aggressive growls of your stomach outweigh your fear of food poisoning. To get started, you'll probably need to find some jelly, bread, plates, and a knife. Approach Fro Fro. Hat hisses as you draw near, but remains firmly in place. This is clear, clear, <laughs> clearly Fro Fro's spot on the counter. We're gonna back away. You back away from Fro Fro, trying not to make any sudden movements. Let's search the pet tree whoa that's a lot of peanut butter and macaroni and bread that bread looks like it might be moldy but that's just shadows probably Tabitha sure loves her mac and cheese Ooh, a peanut butter and jelly sounds really good right now we're gonna take some bread 
you pick up the mo <laughs> one of the non-moldy loaves of bread. Great, one stuff close through to fi satisfying snack. I was right. Those are moldy. A plate, knife, and jelly itself. Examine mac and cheese. You pick up a box of Tabitha's mac and cheese. You can't say you've ever seen the brand before. It's craft. <laughs> what do you mean? Unless they also have craft with a K in this world. Why would we do that? That's freaking rude. We're going to put it back. Swing. Staying away from the mac and cheese was one of your cousin's heart's rules, and she already seems not to like you. She only had two rules. Put the box back where you found it. Reluctant to make anything worse. That's already our... Okay. If we're allergic to the peanut butter, we're not going to take it. Like, close the pantry door as you... As best as you can and turn back to the rest of the kitchen. Oh, that shelf is falling down. That's an easy fix, though. Uh... We already searched the pantry. Search the cabinets. The cabinet must be where Tabitha keeps the dishware. And oddly enough... Utensils. Grab a plate and butter knife. Grab a plate and butter knife. All I need it now is some jelly. That in the mug. I was blown away at Blowing Rock, North Carolina. So your aunt and cousin actually traveled sometimes, even if it was only a few hours from the state estate. Maybe you can route your return trip through Blowing Rock. It might be nice to see the local sites before heading home. Shot glass? I survived Deb's 50th. Your aunt's name was Perlan, so this wasn't from her 50th. From the few stories you've heard about your mom, Perlan wasn't the type to have kits kitschy friends who gave out themed shot glasses at their birthday parties. Okay, we don't really need a bowl. Fridge! Your eyes catch a note taped to the door reading, Janie, stay out, in all caps. Below it, in separate handwriting, are the words, Okie dokie. Whoa, look at all those jellies. <laughs> I thought it said milk too. It's milk 2%. You open the fridge, you already feel a deep urge to wash your hands, even though you have yet to touch anything other than the handle. Why is there so much snow in there? Is that cookie dough? Why did we open the freezer? We're not touching that old takeout. Or the mayo. We're just going to take the jelly and leave. Because I'm scared of everything else. Reach for the unopened jar of grape jelly. Carefully checking its expiration date. You breathe a sigh of relief when you realize it's recent. This was either purchased specifically for you, or jelly is one of the few things in this kitchen Tabitha actually uses. This is the last ingredient you need to make your jelly sandwich. Time to close the fridge and get to work. Yeah, we're, we're done. Uh, let's look outside first. It looks really freaking cool. This garden was reclaimed by the wilderness long ago. It might not be very safe, but who's to stop you from venturing deeper? Let's make the sandwich. Uh, make that. Oh, oh no, it's gone. Okay, well, jelly sandwich. Despite the estate of a horrendous kitchen, you have successfully combined your three ingredients to make jelly sandwich. Congratulations, you can feed yourself. Job well done. That's a lot of jelly. All that hustle, hassle, and took you less than a minute to eat. The rest of the day lies in front of you. Oh, I could have did that last. Fridge, pantry, cabinets, we're done. Uh. Forbidden. With Tabitha gone, there's no one stopping you from going to the forbidden wings of the estate. And then we just fall off the cliff. Except for the locks and chains, stealing them shut. An instrument of obstacle for most, but a mild inconvenience for you. Oh, we just went right in for it. I thought there was a choice. As the lock falls, the door moans open, revealing the entrance to what must have been an incredibly lavish ballroom. 
faintly in the distance, you can hear the quiet notes of an old piano playing from another room. Forbidding wings are yours to explore. We're going in. You can see why your cousin warned you against coming here. Deep gashes tear across the floors and years of detritus have turned what once must have been a magnificent and open ballroom into a tight and claustrophobic maze. Piano you heard from outside the ballroom has grown louder. Whatever it is, it's nearby. It's probably just hap a self-playing model, but maybe you aren't alone here as you thought. Oh, this painting? We're going to obviously figure out where the piano is coming from. You make your way over to the pa uh, painting covering the far wall. It's a family tree. Angry black scratches cover the spaces where your mother should be. Oh. Where? I don't see any scratches. As far as you can tell, there are three exits to the ballroom. There is, of course, the door you came through, and on your far right is a door beyond a broken floor, a dead end. Across the room where you entered is a third and final exit, a glass doorway you can just barely make out behind a pile of broken furniture. You move to investigate it more closely. Oh. As you approach, the playing grows clearer. Without a doubt, the piano is behind this door. Well, we're gonna try and clear it. Though you try with all your might, it's just too heavy for you to do anything more than budget. Well, I guess we're leaving. I'm guessing we needed the strong and streetwise in order to get in here, which would have been a really great combination, honestly. You return to the entrance of the sealed wing and carefully reattach the locks. After what you've seen and heard in the ballroom, you weigh how much longer you should even stay in the estate on your own. Ah! Might as well head to town. Drop your bags off in your room and head out to explore the town. If you'd have known you'd wind up having to walk all the way back to town, you probably would have just asked Tabitha to leave you at the bus stop. Especially with how unhappy she seemed to see you. If only you could wipe the slate between the two of you clean and bury some of the tension. Though maybe your mother's funeral isn't the best time for something like that. But again, maybe it's the perfect time. To the path. It's really pretty out here. Oh, it's like boarded up. Finally, you made it back to town. The holla, as the guy on the bus called it, has probably seen better days. It still has the feeling of an idyllic country town, but its sidewalks are cracked and many of the storefronts are boarded up. Their windows dusty with age. A chill breeze sweeps down the lane and you shudder, suddenly feeling as if you're peering into a grave. Was he it? It's a little puppy! Oh my god, it's a little doofy puppy! Gretchen, come back! Sorry about that, Gretchen can be very slippery when she wants to be. She loves to get loose and cause havoc. Oh, look at her! <laughs> Tell me more about this wonderful creature! Oh my god, look at its face! <laughs> Mothman. I'm in love with this dog and I wish to know everything there is to know about her. Gladly. Favorite food is Cheese Whiz. Her favorite toy is an old sock I sewed to look like a squirrel. And her favorite show is Murder She Wrote. Ooh. Okay, music. Sometimes I leave it on in the background while I'm working to give her something to do. She'll actually sit there in her little bed and watch it like an old lady with her programs. How'd you two meet? That's so cute. How'd you first meet her? Mom was a vet, and she used to visit the regional <laughs> animal shelter on weekends to do checkups. When I was real young, I'd go with her to volunteer. Which really meant I'd do a little bit of manual label labor, and then play with the dogs for the rest of the day. One weekend, believe it or not, someone dropped this off this little one-year-old pug that outgrown its cute little puppy stage. Rude. When I went to clean her kennel, she looked up at me with those big, watery, nervous eyes, wagging her entire butt and whimpering like no one had ever loved her before. I couldn't not fall head over heels, you know? My parents were rugged mountain folks, so they weren't big on toy breeds. 
and at first they refused to even consider adopting poor Gretchen. But I kept visiting every week, and soon enough they caved in and let me take her home. My dad still wasn't too keen on her at first, but soon enough he was taking her out for the trails. She was like a hound dog. <laughs> Sorry for talking your ear off, but I can't help it. I could prattle on about Gretchen for hours. How about I introduce myself? So you won't be nervous. I'm Stella. It's not often I see a strange face in the holler. Every now and then there's a new crop of coal folk, but you don't look dusty enough for that. You aren't in town for the funeral, are you? The Scarlet Funeral? None of your business. Yeah. Yep, I just got into town today. Wow, I didn't think there would be anyone else coming. Are you staying with Tabby? How's she holding up? I haven't seen her since Pearl Ann passed, or for a while before that, now that I think about it. I'm sorry, did you say Tabby? <laughs> did I hear you right? I can't imagine a Tabitha ever going by something so bubbly. She did back when I knew her better. It's been a while. I hope she's okay. Okay, this mystical one has, like, the craziest answers right now. Is she always so, you know, rough around the edges? Yep, that's Tabby for ya. Wouldn't take it too personally. I'm not sure what it says about her state of mind. That she's still her same old grumpy self. It's probably be good for her to... That you're staying here. Even though she's probably never admit it. How long have you known her? Oh, quite a long time. The town really small, so everybody has known everybody else as far as back as they can remember. Damn it, I got a little close when we were both in the school's production of a Midsummer's Night Stream. I was Puck and she was Mustard Seed. As you might have expected, she was more than a little prickly, but I managed to soften her up a bit in the end. But then she graduated, and that was that. Oh. If you just got to town, you must be starving. I was just on my way to have dinner for a co- Ugh. Go to the diner for a coffee. And you've got a ama and they've got amazing biscuits. I thought she was complimenting my biscuits. Yeah, let's go. Oh, there are way more people in here than I thought. The pleasant aroma of greasy breakfast food hangs in the air. In contrast with the empty, lifeless atmosphere of the family estate, the diner is filled with the comforting din of human life. Oh. Everybody's staring at us. All of which grinds to a sudden halt as the patrons realize that a stranger has entered the establishment. Except him, he doesn't care. What are you looking at? I'm gonna quietly slide to the nearest booth. You slide into the nearest booth, pretending that you didn't notice everyone in the diner gawking at you like they'd just seen Bigfoot. No need to be so shy. They don't meet many strangers. It's kind of a big deal when someone new wanders into town. Look at the little dog! Especially since, well, they probably all know what you're here for. And by extension, who you're related to. Even if you don't know anybody, it's not easy keeping secrets in the town this size. Hey, Stella. I went ahead and fixed you up a coffee. They gra uh, gracefully placed a cup of specially brewed coffee in front of Stella. Or specifically? Ah, oh, shucks. Thanks, Avery. And here's some bacon for the little lady. Gretchen sniffs the bacon and digs in. Oh! Anything for you? We're gonna have a biscuit and a coffee. Can I have a biscuit and a coffee, please? I heard they were really good. Best in the county. 
Avery pours the fragrant brew into the empty mug in front of you. They linger after pouring your coffee, turning to you nervously. Oh, and I'm uh, sorry for your loss. Before you have the chance to respond, they're gone. Glad you took my advice with the biscuit. You won't regret it. Anyways, the funeral's not till Sunday, right? That gives you quite a bit of time to slum around town. I'm trying to think if there are any cool events going on this week. It's always the reading adventure at the library, which is supposed to be for little kids, but I do it every month anyway. Oh, and I'm pretty sure Avery's throwing a party Saturday night, so that's a fun thing to look forward to. And there's the weekly Sunday potluck. That should be great. Uh, that should be right after the funeral too, so it'll be a special occasion. Does bot look like a church thing? Would it be weird for me to come if I'm not a member? No, no. Sunday thing is a coincidental. Is coincidental. It's actually hosted by the library. Ooh. Um, not too many people go to the church around here, if I'm being honest. <laughs> yeah, religion sucks. Non-religious community in the rural south? That's gotta be unusual. I know, I know. You must seem like such heathens. But there are plenty of God-fearing folk in town. They just aren't the biggest fans of the local church. Well, the building's fine, but the pastor's another story. There's just something a little off about the guy. You'll get what I mean if you ever meet him. And unfortunately, you probably will. Anyway, those are the big events I can think of. Ah, what did I do? Oh, right click opens the menu. As for the day to day, any idea how you want to kill time for the rest of the week? What's your angle here? What's your angle here? My angle? I would never have an angle. She definitely has an angle. <laughs> okay, so my job means I spend a lot of time in the woods with a camera. And it's always better with someone else in there. When someone else is there too. Before Stella can finish, Avery returns biscuit in tow. Hell yeah, biscuit. Here's your biscuit. When he says it's on the house, she sends her condolences. You didn't have to do that. It looks great. No worries. Hope you enjoy it. Pick up the biscuit. Wait, mystical? It's delicate and fluffy. It nearly crumbles at your touch. Buttery warmth emanates from its surface. You don't even need to taste it to know that it's good. Divinity given buttery form. <laughs> you take a bite. It melts in your mouth as if there was nothing but butter suspended in a thin matrix of dough. Truly, this is a perfect biscuit. I've had better. Whoa. This is really good biscuit. Wow. I'm so glad you like it. Avery lingers at the table for a moment. So, as Stella mentioned, she's famous. <laughs> okay, Avery, I'm not famous. Look. If you're not going to go around tooting your own horn, you know I'm going to do it for you. <sighs> I'm a YouTuber. Wow, that's rad. I want to know what videos you do. Oh, what kind of videos do you do? She hunts cryptids. Hell yeah. I want to be her friend. We're going to be best friends. should really check her out her channel, Scoob. It's amazing. How did you know my name? Wait, how did you know my name? Oh, sorry. It's just that most people in town know about you. Sorry, I'm sure they must seem creepy. Oh, uh, well, I guess... The cat's out of the bag. Holler's a small place. Everybody knows everybody, and that includes extended family. I don't know who's been talking about me. <laughs> I never met, met this side of the family. What would they even talk about? Yeah, must have been getting it from somewhere. She always... She was always on about something you were up to. Um, oops, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said anything. What matters is... That now people can meet the real you. So it doesn't matter what Perlan may or may have not said. Yeah, you can always make a good first impression and wipe the slate clean with the whole town. 
Oh god, what was she saying about me? Ah, <laughs> oh, jeez, look, I'm sorry I said anything. Hey, don't worry about it, Perlan. Was it gossip and... We do this sort of thing with everyone. Spreading weird little rumors about folks was kind of a trademark. Anyways, weren't we in the middle of talking about Stella's Ill illustrious YouTube career? Uh, I guess we were, weren't we? I think the best video to start with would be that river one. Not the lake, but, you know, the controversial one. Oh yeah, the cat... Kedawa Katoba River Runner. I didn't expect much out of that footage at the time, but it wound up being my most popular video by far. Isn't that how it always goes? Like something you don't expect to do anything is just out of nowhere, like the hot top one for no reason. So the River Runner is a cryptid that's only from known from a single sighting. Two Boy Scouts. Thought they saw something big and weird in the river, and that's all I had to go on. But when I wound up catching this on camera, let me see. Stella pulls out her phone and shows you a clip of something in the river. I want to watch it. Some folks said it was a beaver, but if that was the case, it'd be at least twice the size of any beaver I've seen. I also had people saying it was a dog or even a capybara, but... Uh, that must have escaped from a local wildlife sanctuary. I'm still not sure what it was, and I'm not one who saw the thing with my own two eyes. Well, I don't want to be skeptical, and I don't want to say straight up that this crypt did. But I don't think you should leave it alone. Let's say it's a cryptid. Maybe that's a beaver or a dog, and there's no way a, a capybara would be swimming in the river in the mountains of North Carolina. Unless there's some North American colony of capybaras in the Appalachia, but that would still count as a cryptid, wouldn't it? Yeah, until someone catches a capybara up here, I would still count as a cryptid by most standards. My comment section were nuts for the footage, and from there it spread to Twitter pretty fast. There were polls for days. I even had actual experts weighing in. It was all a really cool experience. And it meant the video did some pretty great numbers. Personally, I'm a fan of the copybara theory. Sure, it's not like any local sanctuaries were missing one, but there's always people keeping exotic animals as pets. Kind of a sewer gator type situation. <laughs> exactly. Some exec pet owners set it free. Now it will forever roam the confusing Boy Scouts and YouTube commoners for years to come. So, speaking of things to do around here, I was actually planning on filming this week's video tonight. I was wondering if maybe you'd want to come along? Hell yeah. It's a pretty easy one this week. We wouldn't even have to camp anywhere. I'm just gonna go after the... Wait. No spoilers. Oops. Sorry, Avery. It's okay. I should probably get back to it instead of standing around chatting with friends. See y'all around. Now that the close is clear, I'm gonna have to skunk ape. What's the skunk ape? It's like Bigfoot, but smellier. Most skunk ape sightings are from Florida, but while I was doing research for last week's video, I came across a report where a lady from town over from a town over claimed to have seen one on her deck, playing tug of war with her dog. And as I leave no stone unturned, I've decided it was worth investigating. So what do you say you wanna tag along? Hold the camera for me while I narrate against a darkening sky, that sort of thing? Absolutely. I'd love to come along. That's great! It's been a while since I've had anyone besides Gretchen out there with me. It's gonna be a, a lot of fun. I actually started the channel with a couple of buddies of mine back in middle school, so it's kind of like a blast from the past. Me and Kanika and Reese. Reese. I call... <laughs> I call Reese... I call the little peanut butter cups Reese's. So seeing that made me say Reese. But it's Reese. Uh, running around in the woods, flipping over rocks and bothering salamanders. Our videos were terrible, but I can relate. But we had a lot of fun, and that's all that matters to us. You know, 
That gives me thinking. I wonder if they'd let, uh, they'd be down to come along with us. Get the old gang back together. Though, I guess Kanika has to close out the general store tonight, so I'm pretty sure she's a no-go. But Reese. I think there's a decent chance we could get him to come out of his hidey hole if he's up for it. Do you mind if I make a quick call? Sal pulls out her phone and dials in, waiting while it rings. Reese, dude, what's up? I feel like it's been forever. Aw, oh, man, I'm sorry to hear that. Do you want me to come by, or...? Okay, if you're really sure, but if you change your mind... I was just calling to ask if you wanted to come out to the woods tonight. I met somebody cool in town today. He's Tabitha's cousin. I know! Yeah, just here for the week. Anyway... Ugh. Anyway, we're going out to look for Skunk Ape. We take the easier trails, if that would help. Oh, did they, like, break their leg? Dang, man, that sounds awful. I hope you take it easy tonight. I'll swing by sometime this week and we can have a more low-key hang. How's that? <laughs> yeah, I'll bring him. Talk to you soon. Bye, bud. Little puppy. Looks like it's just you and me, pal. I don't think they asked to bring me to the house. I think there was the little puppy. Although, is the puppy a girl? I forget. Is he okay? He's not feeling well, that's all. He has a lot going on in the past, gosh, 10 years or so. But I feel like it's gotten a lot worse recently. I can't remember the last time I saw him leave his house. Oh well, it's not my place to talk about, really. I just got a little excited about having him come eh, along again. He's hilarious, you'd love him. Just some swing by his place sometime this week. Ugh, haven't I met enough people already? That'd be nice. Love to meet your friends. Awesome. I'll make it happen. My hair keeps looking crazier and crazier, I feel. Definitely the trickier one to meet. Kanika is much easier to track down since she's at the general store basically every day. But, friendship can wait. We've got a skunk ape to hunt. Are we doing it right now? So we should probably head out if we want to make it up to the mountain before it's too dark. Come on, let's blow those popsicle stands. Hell yeah, you pause before getting up. Maybe it's time to make a good first impression. After all, it seems everyone in town has heard awful things about you from your now deceased aunt. We're leaving a ge I always leave a generous tip. People don't get, get paid shit. I don't get paid shit, but I still leave a generous tip. Reach your pocket and pull out a crumbled $5 bill. You know it's a bit more than one would have expected to get from such a short dining experience, but you might as well share the wealth while you've got it. So move out the bill before placing it on the table inconspicuously. Oh, that's awesome of you. Avery will appreciate that, I'm sure. Stella turns to leave the diner while you following close behind. Oh, we're almost on an hour. I didn't realize that. Uh, let's save it, and I might continue it. Empty slot. Yeah. Are there autosaves? Oh, there's autosaves! Quick saves. Nor What's the difference between quick saves and normal saves? It seems like you can save anywhere. Oh, maybe quick saves is just a quick button, and it just keeps saving over them as you go. Anyways, since we've hit an hour, let me know what you thought of this demo uh it's still going so i might come back to it i'll probably come back to it i want to see what this skunk ape is like if we're gonna see a skunk ape um <laughs> yeah i'll make another video on this and let me know what you think of it down in the comments i'll hunt it down i'm assuming it's going to be on itch.io or possibly steam anyways link will be down below for this game let me know what else you'd like me to play. I'm going to pick out a few more games from the mixtape. And I also have volume 3 of the mixtape. So, we have plenty of games to choose from. Yeah. Anyways. I hope you have a great night, day, whatever's going on for you. I hope it's a good one. And I hope to see you for the next one. Bye-bye.